we have just released a new update to our Thrive Architect WordPress plugin. And in this video, I'll show you all the new features, where you can find them and what they do. I'm Brad from Thrive Themes, and once every three weeks, we publish an update to our plugins. Sometimes it's a big update, sometimes just a little one. And the latest update has a couple of really cool features that I wanna take you through. The first feature that I think you're gonna love is Parallax. I'm sure you've seen the parallax effect on websites before. That's when you're scrolling through a web page and two different elements move at a different speed respective to your viewport as you're scrolling down. So it feels like there's a foreground element that moves past your screen quickly and a background element that's slower. And that parallaxing effect creates a, an illusion of depth within your screen. We have now brought this effect to Thrive Architect. I'll show you how it works. So here in the Thrive Architect editor, I have a background element with an image of some buildings and I have some text laid over the top. And I want the text to be parallaxing or moving differently to the background element as we scroll. So now if I select this text element and I look in the sidebar, we have scroll behavior here and there's a new option that says parallax. If I enable this parallax effect, I can click add new effect and by default, we already have our parallax effect. So here, if I scroll up and down the viewport, you will subtly see that the text is shifting a little bit faster than the background image. So we can speed that up. If I crank up the speed to really pronounce that effect, you'll see it's moving differently as we scroll up and down the viewport. So you also have the option to trigger where the viewport animation begins and where it ends. These are with the two sliders, you'll see one that says viewport start and viewport end. It's a little bit tricky to wrap your head around exactly how these work. Remember the start is at the bottom of the screen because that's the first part to enter your viewport as you're scrolling down a page. And it ends as it drifts off the top of the screen and out of view. So if we were to set these effects to say a start of 40% and an end of 60, then I'll show you the effect that has. Now you'll see as I scroll up the page, the text remains fixed in position until it arrives roughly 40% of the distance from the bottom to the top. When it gets to that point now, it begins to parallax. We begin to see the effect, and when it arrives at about 60%, where it's just reached, it's going to remain fixed for the rest of the effect. Now, if I go back and edit this effect, you'll see that vertical scroll isn't the only type of parallax effect. We can also choose horizontal scroll, transparency, blur, even rotate, and scale. So the different kinds of animation effects that contribute to that warping or moving experience that you have as your visitors scroll through your website. So if I change this to a horizontal scroll, you'll now see that the text moves left and right. And you can combine these. If I click apply, I can add another one for a vertical scroll. We'll set that speed to, again, let's just type in five. Now click apply. Now we have two different effects and that should move diagonally like you see. If you have multiple elements on your page that use a parallaxing effect, under the settings of any of them, you have this option to enable the parallax preview. When we're in the parallax preview mode, all elements on the page that have this effect will begin to animate. But you can simply toggle that off while you're in the editor so that you can see where your text or elements are on the page. If you get really creative with your parallax, it can fly around a little bit. So toggling the preview off is an easier way to find exactly where it is. It also puts less strain on your browser because there's a lot of maths that gets processed behind the scenes when you're using the Thrive Architect editor. Of course, it's a much more simple experience to the front end visitor when they're visiting your website. So what that means is even if the parallax preview is switched off inside of the Thrive Architect editor, it's still an effect that's applied on the front end. So I'm gonna click save work and hit preview. So let's look at how this effect would work with transparency. I'll delete this blur, I'll go add new effect and we'll use transparency. So again, I can set this to 50% viewport end and we'll crank it all the way up. And what we'll see when it's at the bottom of the screen and it enters, it's completely invisible and it slowly comes to 100% opacity. So it's fully clear when it arrives in the center. So that's generally the idea with the parallax effect. And you can apply this to all different kinds of elements and use different settings. Get as creative with it as you want. And as you're exploring this, if you have something you wanna show us, we'd love it if you'd share it in the comments below, just to see how creative your use with Parallax can be. The second feature we've added is pagination templates to the post list element. Nearly every single release for the past six months, we've been adding some kind of update to this one element. And this week is no exception. 
I'll start by showing you how pagination works. So here I have a post list element that I've already loaded on the page. So this is pulling in three different blog posts that I've created in the back end of my WordPress website and it's displaying them for the visitor to see. So if I click on this and I click on filter posts, we'll see the rule that I have set to pull in these posts. I want it to display posts that belong to at least one of the categories, blogging tutorials, podcast or workout. In the top right, you'll see it says the number 12. That means that there are 12 different posts that fit that criteria, but I've chosen only to display three. If I close this now, to a visitor on your website, what if they want to see the other nine posts? If you want to give them a way to scroll through your posts, you can enable pagination. So with the post list element selected, on the left you'll see here that says pagination type. And I can click and set that as numeric. The first thing that's going to do is create this little box down in the bottom right. This will allow a user to scroll through the different posts. They can click on whichever number they want to see all the different posts or just choose first and last or next, whichever they choose. And you've got lots of different options there when it comes to pagination. If I click this element, so now we have the pagination selected in the breadcrumbs, you'll see we can enable or disable the next and previous, first and last, or we can change the alignment to be centered or with a space between, whatever you like. But the main new thing that we've added is templates. So in the top left, you'll see template options. If I click on this, you'll see we have some that have been designed by our designers. So I'm gonna click on this first one, choose template, and immediately, without any other work done, I get this beautiful blue circle, the next and previous options, and it's all inheriting the fonts and the colors from my page. I'm gonna click save work and we'll have a look at how that looks on the front end. So you'll see we've got one, two, three, and four. I can simply click on that and then the three posts that are displayed are gonna easily move out the way for the new content. That's how easy it is to create an interactive post list that your visitors can scroll through. This isn't where the updates of the post list element end though. Another update in the latest release is that we've added a link to archive option. I'll show you how that works. So again, with our post list element here, uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go under the edit design option and we'll change what content is actually displayed. First thing I'll do is I'll add post content. This will include an excerpt of the blog post displayed right underneath. At the moment, it's just placeholder text. But I would also like to show what category the blog post is from, because we have three different categories that are showing. So to do that, I'm going to add a regular text element and I'll place it right underneath this title. I'm going to give it a bit of styling just to separate it from the rest. Let's make it a little bit darker and let's make it bold. Pretty exaggerated, but it shows the effect. So what I'd like to do is make this dynamic text. To do that, with it selected, I'm gonna go up and find insert shortcode. From this option, I can choose post categories. When I choose post categories, it's now going to show the category that that blog belongs to. So you'll see if I pick it, we also have this option here that says link to archive. This is the new feature. If we click link to archive, then people will be able to go to the archive list for that blog post category. So I'm gonna click insert, and you'll see that all of these have dynamically changed to say workout. I'm gonna click done, save work, and I'll refresh the front page to show you what I mean. So here we go, now we have the category displayed. And if I click on this category, I'm gonna go open a new tab, jump across. It has taken me to the archive for the topic, as it says right here at the top, category archives for workout. So if I go back to my previous page and I scroll through to the next page using the pagination, now you'll see we have a podcast one. So if I click on that, it's going to open the podcast. So what this means is with a couple of different clicks, you can change whether or not your post is going to take people to straight to the post itself, or if you just particularly want the category to link people to that category archive page. The next two features I can show you at once. Firstly, we have updated the templates and symbols light box for a much cleaner and neater experience. And secondly, we've made the post list element compatible with symbols and templates. If you're not sure what I mean by symbol, let me explain. We're not referring to icons. When we use the word symbol in this context, it's from a web development perspective, where a symbol is a 
an element that is used in multiple places across your website that are all connected. So if you make a change to one of those elements, it will update across all other instances of that same element. So I'll show you how this works with the post list. So again, we have our post list here and in the top right, I'm going to click onto the save icon and we have the option to save as a template or as a symbol. We'll go with a symbol for this and I'll call it post list and click save. Now, anywhere else on my website, I can pull in this same post list. You'll notice it says on the left here in the architect sidebar, edit as symbol, or I can unlink it from that symbol so it's now standing alone and can be edited without the changes affecting anything else. So I'm gonna just place that template onto the same page a bit further down. So I'll add new element, and we'll see our templates and symbols option. I'll drag and drop that right here. First thing you'll notice, this is our new templates and symbols light box. It's a whole lot easier to navigate. It's a lot cleaner. And if I click on symbols on the right hand side, and I scroll down, you'll see here is our new post list. The thumbnail is automatically generated. And straight from this window, I can click the three dots to rename or delete it. But in this case, I'm going to click on it. And here it's already being loaded straight up. Now, because it's part of a symbol, if I edit this symbol and I make a change to this, let's say, uh, just for argument's sake, I'm going to put in a new text element uh, right above it. We'll just go there and I'll write test. Click done. If I scroll up, you'll see test has also been added to the other instance of the symbol. It's a bad example, but you get the idea. So now what this means is you can create the perfect post list that shows your blog posts however you like them, and you can drop it into your Thrive Architect content anywhere across your website. And the moment you want to change those blog posts, you can refer to any of those symbol elements, make a few changes and know that it will apply website-wide. The last three features that complete this update are across our set of plugins. Firstly, we have now added the custom field integration to Infusionsoft. So if you're an Infusionsoft user, then your custom fields that you create inside of Infusionsoft are now available inside of Thrive Leads or a lead generation element. That now means you can collect extra information from your subscribers at the opt-in form and pass it straight through to the custom fields that you create inside of Infusionsoft. To do that, it's just a matter of selecting your lead generation element, connecting it to Infusionsoft. In this case, I'm just using ActiveCampaign because that's the account that I have set up, but it works in exactly the same way. And then under form fields, you click add new, and you can create a text field URL or a hidden field, let's choose text. And then you can simply map that to the custom field that you've created in Infusionsoft. We have also updated our integration with the Sendy API. If you are a Sendy user, you may have heard that they've recently improved their API. Well, we've gone and we've improved how we connect to that API. So now it will all work seamlessly as you would expect it to. Finally, the very last update is to Thrive Quiz Builder we've created a toggle where you can enable or disable auto scroll on your quizzes. I'll show you how this works. From this quiz builder view in the top right hand corner, we have our cog. If I now click on quiz settings, we have this option, enable quiz scroll. You can enable or disable that. So here's what that actually means. So on the front end, here's an example of a quiz. Now, if I position my browser in an awkward position like this, and then I click on one of the answers, you'll see how it moves the viewport automatically to align with my response. And again, if I move down to here and I click next, it's going to move, move my viewport back up. So at the quiz level, if I want to, I can disable that automatic quiz scroll. If I click save and exit. We return to our quiz and I refresh. Now what you'll see is no matter where my viewport is, if I click on the answer, it's not going to move the viewport. So it depends on what WordPress theme that you are using with your website as to whether or not you might want that. So if there's any complications, you can simply disable auto scroll. But in general, auto scroll is the better way to go because it keeps the questions right in front of your viewers. So that is the January 2020 roundup for Thrive Themes updates. Let's recap all of those just quickly, top to tail. This update includes a parallax effect that you can use on your elements pagination templates inside of the post list, the ability to link to an archive from your post list, improvements to the templates and symbols light box, so it's much more user-friendly now, and compatibility with symbols and templates for your post list element. And then we've also added custom field integrations for Infusionsoft, 
We've updated the Sendy API integration. And finally, we've added a toggle for auto scroll inside of Thrive Quiz Builder. We would love to hear your thoughts about these updates. So please leave a comment underneath this video. Tell us what you liked. And if you've got any suggestions, feel free to leave them with us.